My fiancé stood at the altar, his normally self-assured posture replaced by one that was fraught with anxiety and uncertainty. His hands were shaking, and he felt a combination of anxiety and unease racing through his veins. As he took a step back while speaking, everyone caught their breath as they observed him. His voice was filled with anger. I cannot go through with this, he said, his voice trembling with the intensity of the feeling he was experiencing. I'm sorry, but I just can't marry you. In a single moment, my entire world came crashing down. My hopes and aspirations crumbled before me like delicate petals being blown away by the wind, and my heart sank. My thoughts turned to the empty spot in front of the altar, where my thoughts turned to the altar where my fiancé should have stood after he left. My forehead furrowed with confusion, and an unpleasant sensation grew in my chest. After dating for approximately a month, everything started to go wrong. As my partner and I stood there looking at each other, our eyes were burning with rage, and the air around us crackled with nervous energy. The formerly tranquil environment had become a battleground. We had always been a passionate couple, and the deep feelings that accompanied our love were always present. But this was the day that we finally cracked under the pressure of all of our resentments and the disappointments that we had bottled up. The energy of our suppressed feelings gave the impression that the room was vibrating. I yelled at him that he never pays attention to what I have to say. I grew bored of talking to a brick wall since my words don't mean anything to him. He answered by saying that I am so controlling, and that I am so controlling and that I never listen to his side, and that I believe that I am correct. That was the first time we had a furious dispute, and we should have just broken up then. However, the fact that we went back to each other after the first fight was the first error in the downward spiral of our toxic relationship. Soon enough, I came to the realization that I could never love anybody else in my life the way I love my boyfriend, but that does not imply that I am unable to appreciate or love anyone else. If I have a propensity to love other people, then it is not my fault because I was born with that quality. We were invited to a birthday celebration by a mutual acquaintance, and we went there together. After a few minutes, my eyes landed on a guy, and I found him appealing, so I walked up to him and started having a conversation with him. My boyfriend came to me and started making meaningless excuses to borrow me from that attractive guy, but I avoided his every single excuse and stood with the guy to continue my conversation. In the end, my boyfriend left us with anger in his eyes, and when we got back home again, he fought over pointless topics, because he believed that I was intending to insult him, and my point was that he had no right to limit the people with whom I might communicate. We ought to have ended things at that time as well, but after yet another horrible argument, we ended up crawling back to each other. We started making concessions in the hopes that our deep affection for one another would help us overcome our differences. The same argument occurred a week after the peace treaty when we got back from dinner, and he yelled at me the moment we entered the house that there was no need to get friendly with a waiter. I responded to him that I started to feel like I was being suffocated with him in this relationship, and he screamed that if I put little effort into being in this relationship than flirting with other men, then I won't feel suffocated with him. As time went on, we both reached the middle of our twenties, and during this time, every time conversations frequently devolved into disputes, leading to a shed of tears and a gradual breakdown of trust. Our relationship deteriorated and we found ourselves stuck in a vicious cycle of hurt and anguish as a result. I became increasingly defensive because I felt constrained by his expectations every time he showed his dissatisfaction. Our inability to fulfill one another's needs cast pall over the burgeoning romance that we had shared in the past. Everyone anticipated that we would be the first couple to get married, but our friends have already started having weddings, and we haven't made any decisions about it. We went to the wedding of my best friend, and I made a concerted effort not to talk to any of the guys there, despite the fact that it was becoming increasingly difficult for me to breathe and that I had the impression that someone was trying to take away my freedom. All the while, however, things were going smoothly between me and my boyfriend. As the day drew to a close, I decided that I had enough. I searched all over for my boyfriend, but I couldn't find him anywhere. Because I wanted to make the most of this opportunity, I sneaked up on a handsome man and started a conversation with him. 
Just as I was getting back into my normal flirty mode, my boyfriend arrived, caused a scene, and yelled at me while calling me a bitch before leaving the event. This time we both decided to give ourselves a break from each other, and after that, I first felt so amazing, I decided to give the dating scene a shot in the hopes of filling the gap in my life caused by the end of my relationship with my ex-boyfriend. I went out with a number of different boys and started partnerships in an effort to find the elusive fulfillment I desired. Nevertheless, regardless of how promising the links first appeared to be, I was unable to escape the persistent feeling that I was unable to escape the persistent feeling that I was missing something. During the course of my excursion into the unknown, I became friends with a young man named Alex. We became fast friends after randomly encountering one other at a neighborhood cafe and beginning up a chat that rapidly developed into an enthralling friendship. Alex was unlike anyone else that I had ever interacted with before. He was the first person to explain the concept of an open relationship to me, and he recognized the importance of freedom and individuality to me. As I listened to Alex's points of view, I couldn't help but feel a spark of curiosity light within me. My spirit of adventure was captivated by the prospect of being able to experience love without being limited by the confines of exclusivity. Alex gave me his word that he would back whatever choices I made, even if it meant getting back together with her previous boyfriend. Initially, I was opposed to the idea of reconciling with my previous partner. However, as I got to know Alex and the other people in my life better, I began to see that it was not about the number of partners I had or the labels I wore. It was about locating the link that spoke to me in the most genuine way possible. I became better at having honest conversations, establishing healthy boundaries, and putting my own joy first. In due time, I came to the realization that, despite the fact that I liked the independence and thrill that came with being in an open relationship with Alex, my heart craved the profound emotional link that I had previously shared with my previously shared with my previous partner. I came to this revelation with greater clarity and I am happy for the circumstances that brought me to this realization. I chose to rekindle my love with my ex, and I feel grateful. Alex was able to gently accept my decision because he is supportive and understanding. He placed a high emphasis on our connection and consented for my former lover to see me while we continued to maintain our open relationship. The both of us shared a unique link that went beyond the confines of traditional romantic relationships because then I started feeling like there was something missing in my life. When I thought about how much I missed our arguments and fights, I would laugh at myself and then start missing him so much that I would lose control and call him. When I did this, I had the impression that he was just waiting for me to give him a push, and we ended up getting back together after about a month. I became so thoroughly exhausted without him that I made a decision to make it appear as though alter my lifestyle, according to my boyfriend's desires. I followed his preferences for a few days, but soon found myself engaged in an internal conflict, becoming increasingly unsure about my own wants and needs. I kept my boyfriend in the dark about my connection with Alex because I knew from the very beginning that he would never consent to us being together. However, I was so desperate for his company that I eventually reconciled with him. Then... One day, my boyfriend unexpectedly proposed marriage to me, and I found myself unable to decline, having experienced life without him. I had witnessed its horror, and that weighed heavily on my decision. When we were walking hand in hand through the park in the town, I finally worked up the nerve to tell him about the things I wanted from our relationship. In spite of the fact that my heart was beating, I mustered up the courage to recommend that they pursue connections with other people, in addition to their love for one another while remaining in an open relationship. I was confident that it would enliven our connection and allow it to flourish. My proposition shocked him, and he started feeling a flood of doubt sweep over him as a result. He treasured the idea of a committed and exclusive relationship with me and loved the profound emotional connection that the two of us had developed. His perspective on love was one that upheld traditional values and advocated for monogamy. I am relieved that I did not tell him about Alex since the concept of being in an open relationship 
caught him off guard, and I cannot imagine what he would have done in that situation had I informed him about Alex. In the end, he asked for some time to think about it and come to a conclusion. As the days grew into weeks, we found ourselves right in the middle of the hectic activity that was preparing for the wedding. My excitement rose as I dived headfirst into planning every aspect of the event, from choosing the ideal dress to settling on the venue and menu for the reception. I have eagerly given my thoughts and asked for his feedback, but I couldn't help but notice that he wasn't as enthusiastic as I was. He came out as remote and distracted, as though his mind was overwhelmed with the significance of the choice that he had not yet made. My stomach turned as I feared the worse, which was that my proposition had profoundly troubled him. My heart fell. My concerns multiplied with each passing day, and a pall of ambiguity descended upon the activities surrounding the preparations for our wedding. I wanted our special day to be a reflection of our love story. Therefore, I longed for his involvement and passion in the planning process. I couldn't seem to shake the notion that I was overlooking an essential component. I was torn between the love I had for my fiancé and the exhilaration I had when I was with Alex. It was a precarious act of balance, one that required precise navigation in order to be successful. I suddenly realized that I was entangled in a complex web of feelings. On the one hand, I was overjoyed to make a lifelong commitment to the person I love, cherishing the profound connection we have and the goals we have in common. On the other side, my soul longed for the pleasure and discovery that I had while traveling with Alex. In the middle of the craziness that was the preparation for the wedding, she deftly managed both my time and attention with Alex. I was under the impression that my fiancé did not know anything about Alex, but in truth, he was aware of my relationship with him, and it was the primary reason why he was behaving in an agitated manner throughout the preparation. The approaching date of the wedding made it impossible for me to ignore the mounting significance of the choices I had made. My mind was filled with doubts and uncertainties, which led to me experiencing periods of vulnerability and introspection. I questioned whether or not the decisions I had made could be maintained in the long run, and whether or not it was possible for me to actually find pleasure and fulfillment while existing in two different worlds. Because I made the decision to keep my fiancé in the dark about everything related to Alex throughout my entire life, being in a relationship with him in this manner proved to be the most successful method for ensuring both of our satisfaction. Since Alex did not have any objections to my wedding, I was able to relax on that front. I thought my fiancé struggled with making a decision because he was conflicted about how his love for me should interact with his own beliefs, but actually... He was waiting when will I tell him about Alex, and that wait was eating him inside. The days slipped into weeks, and before we knew it, we were standing on the threshold of our wedding day, at the altar, dressed in a stunning white gown, and with my pulse hammering with anticipation, I waited at the foot of the aisle in the hopes that he would come to accept my proposition. As the guests for the wedding filed into the seats, he entered the church and took his seat next to the officiant. The atmosphere was electric with nervous energy and eagerness. The moment the priest started the ritual, his voice resounded across the room, shattering the stillness around him like a sharp blade. And when he turned down the wedding, everyone there was overcome with astonishment and dismay once the shocking news spread throughout the place. As I attempted to make sense of what was taking place, the tears began to well up in my eyes. His remarks continued to demonstrate his affection for me, even as his voice began to shake, as he elaborated on his line of reasoning. He admitted that he was unable to provide me with the kind of relationship that I desired, and that he could not bring himself to prevent me from finding the love that I was looking for. In addition, he disclosed to me at the altar that he was aware of Alex, and that he had been waiting the entire time for me to tell him the truth. This revelation greatly irritated him and it caused him to conclude that our relationship is not worth pursuing marriage if we are unable to tell one other the truth. I was utterly devastated and heartbroken because of my lies, and I struggled to keep the tears from falling. I was able to see things from his point of view, yet the anguish caused by his rejection cut me deeply. The wedding ceremony, which was supposed to be a celebration of our love for one another, had instead become a heartbreaking reminder of the ways in which we are different. 
I took a deep breath and found the strength to confront the reality that was in front of me, despite the fact that my heart was heavy. I praised him for his candor, fully aware that the choice he had to make, challenging though it may have been, was ultimately the right one, was ultimately the right one. We stood face to face and exchanged a hug that was tinged with sadness, full of love, respect, and a profound awareness of the loss we both felt. After the wedding was put off, I was in such a state of disbelief that I was looking for some solace in Alex's words, and after a few days, when he realized how uninterested I was in life without my ex in the beginning, he was complaining about it and he tried to cheer me up, but he didn't notice any change in my disposition. He gave it to me. In addition, Alex severed all contact with me without providing any explanation. The thing that Alex did to me broke my spirit more than anything that my fiancé did to me. I was unable to accept that both of my relationships had ended when I found that my hands were empty. Perhaps it was my own little form of retribution for my dishonesty with my fiancé, the one who loved me the most. Update. In the days that followed, I discovered that I was standing amidst the ruins of my shattered hopes with a tremendous burden of sadness in my heart. The wedding, which was supposed to be a happy occasion, had instead become a jarring reminder of the divide between two people with divergent ambition. When two people's lives varied in such a fundamental way, I came to the realization that love alone could not always cross the distance that separated them. It was a hard lesson for me to learn, but I'm glad I did. After everything had calmed down, I made the decision to begin on a path toward recovery and self-exploration so that I could find out who I am. I was aware that the road to recovery would not be a smooth one, but I was resolved to put together the shattered pieces of my heart and discover the consolation that can be found only within myself. I had some time to myself, so I used that time to think about the strength of love and the complexity that come along with it. I gave some thought to the significance of this elusive feeling and questioned how well I understood it myself. What did I really understand by the term love? Was it about making a compromise or making a sacrifice? Or was it about something else different? I came to the realization that my conception of love had been strongly shaped by the demands of society as well as the idealistic concepts that were portrayed in fairy tales. But now that I was free from those illusions, I had the opportunity to discover and reimagine love according to my own standards. As for my ex fiance, he too set out on his own journey, looking for a love that was compatible with his principles and ideals as a person. Our lives went in different directions, but the memories of the time we spent together continue to serve as a reminder of the love that we once shared. 